I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. This morning when I looked at my blog, somebody had posted a comment that said they were very skeptical about Zero Limits, the book, and saying something as simple as, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and thank you. But they were laying in bed, and there was a lot of noise going outside, and they apparently were in an apartment, and it was very noisy outside with a party going on and so forth, and they decided they would just try it. And so they laid in bed saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and so forth, and they said almost instantly, the party stopped. The noise stopped, and she went to bed, and she went to sleep. I say she. I don't know if it was a she or he. <clears throat> I wanted to point out, first, the simplicity of this, and then, second, something I think is very important. You're not doing the cleaning to get something. You're doing the cleaning to clean. You're not doing the cleaning to get a particular result. Because if you're trying to get a particular result, you're still in the world of the data, of the ego, of, uh, of intention, of trying to control everything from your little itsy bitsy conscious, conscious mind. What you're trying to do is erase, constantly erasing, constantly erasing, so that what you do receive is inspiration. Then when the inspiration comes, there's a purity to that, that is coming from zero, that is coming from the divine, and that's what you step into. I keep referring back to this TV show thing, and I want you to realize that I'm not making it happen. I am not trying. I am cleaning. And as I'm cleaning, things happen. But I'm not trying to make them happen. Somebody asked me yesterday about all the things that I do, that I'm an incredibly prolific writer. I'm pretty much the book of the month club now. Almost every month I have a new book coming out. There's probably more books coming out than most people have read since high school. You know, and they can't keep up with it. And I have people who are fans of mine who are on my mailing list who try to keep up, who complain, you write too much. I can't buy all of your books. I can't read all of your books. I can't read all of your blog posts. And they think that I'm just doing a whole lot of effort. <clears throat> I'm doing a whole lot of struggle. But what's really happening is it's play. It's an effortless activity. And this is what happens when you come from inspiration. When you just keep cleaning and the divine says something like, write this book, Joe, or whatever it happens to be, it's easy for me to do it. Now, when you look at me doing it, it may seem like intense effort because you're trying to imagine what it would be like for you to do it. But when I do it, it's natural for me. It's much like you with your sonnet over there. I don't want to have to go and memorize it. I don't want to have to go and perform it. That's not my inspiration. It might be at one day. It might be at one point as I keep cleaning. <coughs> as I keep cleaning, I might wake up one day and I'll have the inspiration to go pull something out of one of my favorite books and to memorize it and to actually turn it into a the theatrical uh, experience. But until that happens, it'll feel like work to me because it won't be natural. So I just keep cleaning, keep cleaning, keep cleaning. And the person who posted on my blog, it's wonderful that the noise <coughs> stopped. But maybe it wasn't even related. Maybe the noise was going to stop anyway. The cleaning was to be done so he or she would be OK with the moment. And out of that moment, he or she may have been inspired to do something else. Like because of the noise, get up and write a poetry, or to work out a business plan, or to go for a walk, or a run. I don't know. It could have been any number of things. So you're cleaning to clean. And this was one of the hardest things for me to accept when he first told it to me, because he kept saying, my, old, my only duty here, my only job on earth is to clean. When he's at the hospital, the mental hospital there, he said, I'm just there to clean. When he left there, I'm just here to clean. When he comes up here, and believe me, we didn't talk before this. I hadn't seen him since the last seminar. We haven't spoken on the phone. We just show up. Our agreement was, you know, it starts at 10 o'clock. I'll see you at 945. We just keep cleaning, and that's what he's doing. He just keeps cleaning. I am just keeping the cleaning. And as a result of it, don't you feel like there's <coughs> real magic happening? 
and a real miracle happening and that cleansing is happening in this room? When I look across and I see all of your faces, you are incredibly attentive and your eyes are wide open and bright and your energy fills your auras and so forth. Every single one of you just have this radiating out. There is something powerful going on here. But all we're doing is cleaning. That's all we're doing. Dr. Hulatin? No, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet you think of something. Come on up here. It's your turn. I've erased the board. Do you have anything you want to ask Joe? Yeah. She has a question, yes. Right here, Bruce. So, I have no question. I just wanted to get like a little bit more information about the uh, relationship that Dr. Hulin was talking about with the mother and the child. You know, I did that whole um, conscious and subconscious, because it's all happening in the subconscious where we really want it to be erasing from. So, I just had to go over that again, you know, just how you mm -hmm. speak to the, you know, just that whole thing. That's your department. That's your department. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm passing the buck. <laughs> Ho'oponopono. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. If you haven't heard of it, brace yourself, because it's the most powerful, the most transformational, the most magical, the most miraculous technique I've ever come across. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. I've written 80 books. I've recorded 15 albums. I have 200 some products. I have a coaching program, certification programs, but nothing ever has had the impact in my life as Ho'oponopono has. I've been teaching it to other people since around 2005. There is great depth to it, though it's very simple. On the very superficial level, there's really only four phrases, and you're kind of saying them as a quiet prayer or petition. But there's so much more to it than that. And what I really want you to do is check it out. I want you to check it out for you, your family, your friends, and ultimately for the world. It's that powerful. And as I like to say, expect miracles. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. <laughs>